Well, hello, hello, Alex. Can you hear me? Hello. Yes, yes, I can hear you. <laughs> oh my gosh. You have no idea how excited I am to have you going live with me in the Facebook group tonight. Oh my gosh. Well, thank you for agreeing <laughs> to do this. I know that you're a super busy professional. I am, but I love talking real estate. I'll talk real estate all day long. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. I'm this close to being banned from talking real estate in my house. So right. <laughs> about real estate, I am here for it. I'm right. absolutely here for it. So thank you. Thank you. I know you just joined the Facebook group recently. So we are a group of busy professionals yeah. looking to add that additional revenue stream. And we know that having two or three revenue streams is no longer a luxury, but a necessity. Am I right? Yes, very much so. Absolutely. So I'm a pharmacist by day. That's what my background mm -hmm. is in real estate okay. by night. And so in this group, you'll find people of all walks of life, busy professionals, real estate professionals as well, who are here in this group. And so I'm happy to be here. Yeah. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about yourself. I know you're a respiratory therapist. Is that right? Yes. So uh, my name is Alex Sabio. Uh, married father of four. I live here in Southern California. I do have a W-2 job. I'm a respiratory therapist. Been doing that since 2002. I really enjoy what I do. I specialize in neonates and pediatrics, but I've worked at large teaching facilities. I've worked at a county facility. I've, I've worked trauma, burn, you name it. I've done it. And I really enjoy working with neonates. So that's my specialty right now. And so I started investing in real estate in the mid 2000s, really as a want. I wanted to create generational wealth for my family. I made a ton of mistakes, got caught in the 2008 recession, just like everyone else, you know, but I made some good moves, started investing in single family out of state. Now I've invested in like multifamily syndications, and now I'm currently investing in short-term rentals. And so I think in 2016, I was absolutely miserable at my job. I had like a change in management and my want to invest in real estate all of a sudden became a need, like I needed a way out. And because I realized that life just going to continue that way. And so I focused heavily on short-term rentals and that's kind of how, uh, where I am at now. That's awesome. And in short-term rentals, the numbers do not lie. Am I right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's, you know, I, people ask me about it and all I could say is that it's, it's just phenomenal. There's no other words. I, I, I just, I, I don't know how to describe it. It's absolutely phenomenal. It's given us freedom. And we're, we're close from me walking away from my W-2 job and hitting that goal. Oh, and, and I think that's just so incredible because despite everything that's going on, the numbers have really, we've hit some really great targets. And I know that even in the group, we've been talking about how the occupancy is looking lately. And, you know, now that it's back to school, they're thinking, mm -hmm. there, but there are definitely ways to navigate through that. So let me ask you this. How sure. has the portfolio that you have right now with the short-term rentals, and I know it sounds like you've, you've dabbled in a lot, how mm -hmm. has it really impacted your mindset as you navigate your day-to-day -day at work? Well, it's crazy because it's really freedom, right? I'm not really reliant on my job anymore as an income right? It's funny because I, I absolutely love what I do. If you, if you look at my department, I love it more than anyone else. I really do. I really enjoy it. But everyone there is under so much pressure to perform and, you know, to put out the amount of work that to complete the workloads that they're given. But I don't have any pressure at all. I, it's like, you know what, if they get rid of me, it's okay. I have this other income, like I the roofs over my head and and my family's fed. I, I don't have that. Still love what I do. Like I said, absolutely love it. And maybe love it a lot more. Like what, and that's what I'm trying to, I'm trying to take as many people along with me because I think their outlook would be a little, a, a whole lot different if you were performing because you just enjoy doing it, not necessarily because you were forced to do it. Oh my goodness. And, and you hit the nail on the head and you feel emboldened a little bit because mm -hmm. I feel like as, as people in healthcare, sometimes we are pushed to perform, pushed to get those numbers. And yeah. if you know you have options out there, you can take a step back and say, wait a minute, but why? Like, wait a minute, is, is this really going to help patient care? How, how, how is this really going to help others? And right. you become kind of an advocate because not everyone can speak out, right? Mm -hmm. Not everyone yeah. can speak out. And you feel like, you know what, I'm going to speak for the, those yeah. who can't speak out because- yeah. I know what, you know, resources I have. 
my heart goes out to those who can't and you can really be an advocate. And so yeah. that's what I have found too is, is as the freedom because I'm super thrilled and super excited about my profession, as, you know, in healthcare as well. But when things start to go awry, I'm, I'm going to take a step back and say, you know what, and without fear, without trembling, like, but why? Like, really, you guys, you know, can't we get some more resources to get this accomplished? What can we do to do right. better for the team? And what can we do to do better for the patient? So, right. right. Uh, I, yeah. yeah, that's amazing. So Alex, let's get down to the nit and gritty. And you know what? I think I want to share screens right now because sure. would you, well, let me ask you this. Do you still hold a bit of your portfolio in long-term rentals as well? Because I know that's one place you dabbled. We do. Um, I'm trying to get rid of all of them. You know, I think, uh, <laughs> you know, it, it's crazy because my formulas, I tend to invest in areas that are high, you know, um, uh, destination markets. And those places are fun to invest in. They're cool to go to. But I own I own homes in Cleveland. I never wanted to go to Cleveland, and I'm a Cleveland Browns fan. I never wanted to go there, you know. And and I own homes in um, like Huntsville, Alabama, which was been it, it's been amazing. Don't don't get me wrong, but it's just hard when you're like, oh, it profits three four hundred dollars a month, which yeah. was was amazing before. But now the profits right. we're seeing with short term rental you kind of look down on that and you're like, yeah, you know, <laughs> so when you look <laughs> at the amount of equity, <laughs> yeah, when you look at the amount of equity you have in those, let's say you have, you, you, you say, Hey, if I sell this, I could probably buy an income producing property. That's going to generate 10 times more monthly income and give us so much uh, tax shelter to the point where you're going to pay zero in taxes, it becomes a no brainer at that point. Right. And then something that she touched on a little bit in the beginning, which I love is it's almost like a lifestyle asset. Like these are areas you actually want to visit and you right, want yeah. to enjoy with your family. So mm -hmm. I'm hearing a lot of things here, Alex. You touch base on the cash flow, you yes. touch base on the taxes. You touch mm -hmm. base on the destinations. And I hate to be biased, but I am a short-term rental girl through and through. And you right. look, I've been preaching to the choir. I've been shouting to the rooftops about short-term rentals, but I love to hear other people talk about it too. So it's not just me yeah. being all over the place with it. So so that is that is so awesome. So yeah. do you have a strategy in mind? And I want to give a plug from my dear friend, Lorena Edwards. She's going to be coming on board uh, next week to talk to us because she transitioned her 18 long-term rentals into short-term rentals. Wow. And, yeah. you know, out in the Atlanta market. And okay. so, I, yeah, that's going to be something that I think will provide a lot of value because a lot of folks here, they do have long-term rentals as well. Yeah. And they're yeah. wanting to not only purchase in destination, but how do you, what is the strategy? What's the SOP for transitioning these long-term rentals into short-term rentals to start driving that cash flow and the tax mm -hmm. implications, whether it's bonus depreciation and all of that yeah. good stuff. So, it's so exciting stuff. <laughs> Yeah, it is. It is. Yeah. Do you have a plan for that or do you yeah. anticipate that most likely you will sell and, and purchase in destination areas? Yeah, I mean, I'm in the Smoky Mountains of Tennessee and my whole strategy was I wanted to focus in on four bedrooms and above. And I didn't want to grow too fast to a sense where I would much rather have one four bedroom performing versus two or three two bedrooms because my time is valuable, right? I'm, I'm a little bit older now, I'm 41 years old. And I want that, not only do I want financial freedom, but I want time freedom. And when I started looking at short-term rentals, you know, with long-term rentals, I had a financial goal of when I first started investing in real estate, I wanted 20 to $25,000 a month cash flow, And I felt like that would replace my wife's and I's income. And we would be able to buy healthcare, we'd be able to travel, we'd be able to pay for a college. When you look at long-term rentals, man, I'd probably need 150 of these, right? And just by the law of averages, most likely 150 of them, probably three or four would go through a foreclosure, right? Or, or not a foreclosure, an eviction. Sure, and yeah. it would probably cost you three to $5,000, right? And how much cash flow would you really have? With short-term rentals, you don't need that many doors to get to that number, I'm going to hit that number with four to five doors. And we'll talk about some of the numbers here 
where we hit that financial number with two. That's all you needed, just <laughs> two. And so we focus in on the larger cabins. It is a little yeah. frustrating because you want to build up that capital and then make that investment uh, versus, yeah. oh, I want to buy something right now, you know, but you have to be kind of patient with it. And so I'm extremely patient. Like I said, I'm a Cleveland Browns fan. I've mm. been patiently waiting for them to win for years. And, you know, if I'm patient with them, I could be patient with my real estate stuff. <laughs> um, so I'm really patient with my pricing. I'm patient for my guests to book and I'm patiently buying. But if you look at it, I mean, I really only started buying as a year ago. We closed in August 3rd of 2020 and we'll have our third one built in November and then our fourth one sometime in February or March. We have them under contract being built. And so I'll hit that financial freedom number early next year. Yes, 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 Alex, you hit the nail on the head. And if I can have a tagline for my real estate life, it is how do I own or control the least number of properties that generate the highest profitability? Yes. If I could have one, um, that would be it. <laughs> you no, know? absolutely. And you're yes. absolutely right. And that's, and it's, it's hard because I have that shiny object syndrome. My friends with 20 doors, 50 doors, they're like doors, mm -hmm. doors, doors. But the, mm -hmm. <laughs> and I kid you not, I would find in, in Georgia, in some of the more, you know, rural or remote areas, it would be 20 doors on sale for 360,000. I was like, oh my gosh. And I'm ready to drive down there. And my husband was like, eager McBeaver, what <laughs> yeah. is the rent per month? Mm -hmm. And when you see yeah. they're paying $145 of rent, yeah. $200 of rent, $300 yeah. per month, it's like, First of all, I want to live there because that rent is so it's, it's right, crazy. right. So at that point, you have to take a step back. Those numbers don't add up, and the level yeah. of effort to keep up with twenty doors each paying about two hundred dollars in rent per month. It's like, why? <laughs> yeah, and really, what kind of tenant are you dealing with? I mean, I was poor a long time, right? I'm and I would have loved to pay, right? Yeah. I would have loved to pay that. But like I tend to focus in on the luxury, more, you know, modern upscale short-term rentals and your guest clientele is just, they're just easier to deal with, you know, and are you going to have problems dealing with people that pay $200 a month and that's what their budget is? Unfortunately, you will have problems, you know? And so when you look at, like I said, time freedom is a big thing with me. You're going to be wasting a lot of time with those tenants that are paying that amount of money yeah. you will have the shiny object syndrome like oh my god i could buy this home for three thousand bucks and they're gonna pay nine hundred dollars a month oh it just doesn't work out that easy you know yeah and you're absolutely right and so what you did was very strategic you wanted sure. and, and what you said with patience right because mm -hmm. i think our big pivot shift was because sometimes you know i'm not as patient if i'm not doing a deal a month i don't feel like i'm living you know yeah. and so and we'll, we'll <laughs> go into that in a minute but our homes and our properties are five to eight bedrooms mm -hmm. in, you know, a little bit wow. more affluent areas, luxury, mm -hmm. and yeah. we are up to half a dozen or so own, but we help others manage and we mm -hmm. help others with co-hosting and we're also arbitraging a couple as well. And the okay. reason is that I'm looking for a deal. I'm looking for a deal. And right now, not everything's in my budget. I have one under construction as well in Rosemary uh -huh. Beach. But if nothing's in my budget and I'm looking for a deal, well, what's a girl to do? And that's when people have started, you know, have started reaching out to me uh, this year to say, how do you, you know, how do you do this? Well, I want to buy one, but I don't know what to do. So I've been kind of sharing information and helping them manage as well. And so that's yeah, definitely yeah. a fun model, the co-hosting and the property management uh, piece of it as well. And so you're right, being patient. Oh my gosh. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. like I, I want... I want another deal now, but you, you really have yeah. to be patient to get the right one. And so that's you really do. cool. So your new constructions, are they all going to be in the Tennessee Smokies? Yeah. So we have two in the Smoky Mountains, uh, the city of Pigeon Forge. Uh, I have another one probably three miles away, um, close to the parkway um, in Sevierville and one a little bit off the parkway, also in Sevierville. So yeah, just like I said, time freedom, right? We want to just be able to travel to one market. And if we go to there to visit our homes, we just want to stop by, you know, boom, 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 right next to each other. Not only that, I the second ca cabin that we have, and we'll go over some of the numbers, was a four bedroom, four and a half bath with an indoor pool. 
when I got the third one under contract, my agent asked me, what model do you want? Well, I said, I want the same exact model because now I could plan ahead and it'll be easier for me to manage. It's going to be easier for me to answer guests. I could have easily gotten a bigger model or something different, but I'm trying to make it as easy as possible for me. Yeah. Standardization, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. So how are you buying all this, all of these houses? Are you using 401k? Are you using savings? Yeah. What is your what is your um, strategy to fund? Yeah. These? Are you putting 20% down? Are you putting yeah. your 10% down? What's your strategy? Yeah, all of the above. You do whatever you can to get these and you find out really quick. Because I so my claim to fame is in the middle of a global pandemic, I invested every single dollar I had into a short term rental. And then about three and a half months later, my wife was able to retire from her W-2 job. Yeah. But like right away, you start. So the first one, we wound up pulling, I think we pulled in equity from this house and, and we uh -huh. pulled equity from another long-term rental. And I saved my butt off. I worked my butt off for like two, three years. And I, I that total wound up being about $115,000. And like I said, I put every single dollar into it and I didn't know what the hell I was doing. And people questioned it, you know, but right away, month one, we profited 5,000. Month two, we profited 5,000. Month three, we profited 5,000. And you start saying, where on earth can I get more money to buy more of these, <laughs> right? And so we actually, um, the CARES Act did help us last year. Uh, we pulled out $100,000 out of my wife's 401k. And then I pulled out $100,000 from my 401k. So now we have $200,000 to invest. And that's kind of been sitting there. Interesting enough, this house went up more in value. So we refinanced and cashed out again, like maybe eight months after we did the first time. To me, it's a no brainer because you're borrowing money at 3% to generate a 50% return or whatever you're making in short-term rentals. And then uh, right now we're like, well, all of these long-term rentals, we have equity in those, should we start selling them off? Even though those long-term rentals, I bought them like 60 to $80,000. The way I look at it now, I'm like, well, they're probably worth $100,000. What can that $100,000 get? So yes. yeah, all of the above, do whatever you can to get the money. So I, I totally get it. I totally get it. And I look forward to the day I can have some, I'm looking to have a couple of tax strategies. I know Amanda, she is super busy. I have that's not my tax, a that's lot. My tax strategies. That's, yeah. Oh my gosh. I'm looking to get a few tax strategies because I want them to break it down and share mm -hmm. with them. I just know the taxes are good. I don't know all the ins and outs of why I'm not a tax account. I'm not an attorney, y'all. Yeah. Alex is not yeah. an attorney. He's not a tax account. We're just sharing our experiences yeah. here. So yeah, that, that is incredible, Alex. And I'm with yeah. you. I'm and with oh my you. God. So, so the first year of doing this, so I implemented the strategy. And really as a backstory, it was my tax strategist that got me into this, Amanda Hahn, because she was kind of guiding me through. And then she said, and at the time I was trying to do multifamily. I was trying to syndicate a large apartment complex. And then she kind of threw out, you know what, why don't you do short term rentals, because I have a, you, we can claim more real estate hours based on that. And then she kind of threw in, hey, the cash flow is going to be a little nicer too. She should have started off the conversation with the cash flow is going to be a lot nicer. <laughs> And, and you'll get more tax breaks from it, right? right? Lead with so, that, lead with yeah, that. Yeah, lead with that. Cash flow, come on. Yeah, <laughs> you should have led with that. And I tell her that story, you know? <laughs> and so last year, or when we filed our taxes for 2020, I paid zero in taxes. It was the first time I looked at it. I said, oh my God, the strategy wow. worked. And so it does get you into a hamster wheel where you kind of have to, you it forces you to buy more cash flowing assets to get more tax write-offs, which is weird because you wind up being in a better position because you're buying more cash flowing assets. But then at the same time, you get more tax write-offs. It's been phenomenal. Like I said, there's no other words I could use like to describe it. All I keep saying is that it's just been phenomenal for us. Yeah. And, and I'm a hundred percent with you because I'm also a girl that's interested in syndications. I'm interested in multifamily. I'm interested in commercial. I have friends who are doing industrial and the Mm -hmm. You just turn into Amazon. I am interested in all that. But when I sit down with him, I said, give me, just tell me what the numbers are. No. I'm, I'm struggling. No. Isn't that, I'm really struggling. And so, no, yeah. 
nothing has given me the cash flow right like short-term rentals so let's jump into yeah. these numbers because i know everyone has been patiently waiting i am let's going talk to numbers go ahead. yeah let's talk numbers <laughs> go, ahead, go ahead and share screens real quick guys Sure. All right. So this guy here, it says the only 10 I see. So tell That's me about it. this property. <laughs> so this is actually, this is actually our second short-term rental. Uh, we okay. got it under contract in October of okay. last year, just before like prices started jumping. And I thought the prices were ridiculous when I paid for this. Okay. Uh, we got this for $680,000. It's four bedrooms, four and a half bath. And the cool thing is this thing has an indoor pool came wow. fully furnished. I did have to put, you could see the only 10 I see, I try to make it Instagrammable, right? I want people to take pictures in front of it. And mm -hmm. I have like, you know, a, a big sign that says Pigeon Forge. Or I have a big sign that says Smokey, like in, in the basement. And so I did spend a little bit more money, which was like $10,000. And that was probably $5,000 over budget. But, um, you know, I think I'm going to get it back uh, right away. So as far as how much gross revenue we think we're going to make on this, on the very low end, we think we're going to gross about $150,000. Uh, but we, we're optimistic we could hit probably $180,000. Wow, that's awesome. And so how far away is it from your first property? And we'll go to that one next. Yes, yeah, so it's three miles from the first property. This thing is a mile and a half from the, the parkway, which I, I tell people that's the strip. So this one's a mile and a half from the parkway. My other one is also a mile and a half from the parkway. So really close to each other. It takes me about, I don't know, six to eight minutes to get to each property, which was cool. Cause I, I, I went there, I've been to this property three times already. And each time I'll drive by the other property just to take a look at it. Or sometimes I'll drop stuff off and, or get something from the owner's closet and bring it in over here. Awesome. And so are you driving to or flying to your uh, property there? I'm flying. Yeah. So I live here in Southern California. So I'll, I'll fly into Knoxville and I'll stay in these properties. That's the cool thing with the short-term rental. You get to enjoy them. Mm -hmm. um, I took my family there and we enjoyed five days in the Smoky Mountains and we went to Dollywood. We actually acted like guest we actually enjoyed stuff instead of working on the short-term rental and like fixing it up we had, we went to the restaurants and you know just enjoyed all of the stuff that other guests enjoys that's amazing that's amazing and so as far as management is concerned what tools are you using in your tool stack to do your pricing to do your yeah where do you list it what otas are you using or other types of um, travel agencies do you use to list your property yeah, so that's the cool thing. We self-manage this from 2,000 miles away. We manage everything from our phone. You know, I, I'm a strong believer that you should be able to manage everything on your phone. We use Your Porter. Your Porter has been pretty good for us so far. I won't say perfect. You know, I don't think any of these are perfect. Each one's going to have its own bug. Right? Extremely cost-effective. <laughs> I know people that are not using, you know, a channel manager or anything like that. I'm like, if you're having to try to save nine bucks a month on your business, like you're in trouble. You know, like these things are totally worth it, totally worth your time. There's automated messages. The one thing I love about it is that it automatically programs the code for you. So the, it'll program the guest last four digits of their phone number in, into my lock. And that costs 75 cents each time. So I use your porter as my, my uh, channel manager. And then I have a Schlage on code. That's my law. I, I do use Price Labs. I love Price Labs. There's a, lots of little tips and tricks I could give you where it'll easily generate you $5,000 a year without having to do much, right? Mm -hmm. So Price Labs is my uh, pricing software. Those are your two main things. My cleaner on this one uses VR scheduler. And so I'm listed on Airbnb and VRBO. I get about a 50-50 split, half Airbnb, half VRBO. And my cleaners get those schedules and I don't have to tell her anything. You know, she just shows up like she has it on her calendar. That right. was a auto I don't awesome know about that. Trip. Yeah. VR scheduler. Yeah. yeah I VR scheduler. That. And then even if you need something done to the cabin, what you could do is like, let's say if, you know, John is checking in August 15th to 19th, you could put something under the notes like, Hey, could you adjust the ring club? Like, cause it's off by a little bit and they look at it, they'll go there and then they'll adjust it and they'll upload pictures if anything's wrong. So I absolutely love that. Awesome. So do you yeah. use any other travel online travel travel agencies or other OTAs other than Airbnb and VRBO right now? 
No, I, I mean, I have a website, a direct booking website. I haven't gained any traction on that yet. So it's just there. But the thing is, you know, when you invest in these like heavy destination markets, there's so many people. There's supply and demand is heavily in your favor. Like people need a place to stay. And I, I'm not struggling with getting guests at all. So I'm just, I'm happy on Airbnb and VRBO right now. Nice. That is awesome. That's good to hear. All right. So let's take a peek at the next property. And I had them out of order. I'm sorry, Alex. So this is okay. going to be your first property. Tell this me about it. Granddaddy of them all. This is our first one. You know, um, what's crazy is, you know, I think when you purchase a short-term rental, you kind of have in your mind set a budget. You're like, mm -hmm. oh, okay, I'm going to go there. I'm, you know. I, I want something for 500,000 or something like that. And my realtor showed me this cabin. I said, let's meet up. And she showed me this cabin and she said, this is the one you need to buy, but it's $625,000. And I said, oh man, are you, are you sure? Like, are you trying to now. kill me? Yeah, yeah. I'm like, my house isn't worth that much. You know, you want me to do this on an investment home? Now, mind you, I'm used to buying 60 to $80,000 homes. Yeah, but she's she's like, this right. had better work. This had if this yeah. doesn't work out, <laughs> yeah, we just liquidated everything. If this doesn't yeah. work out, <laughs> yeah, but she was right. And and at that time, I'm kind of evolving to listening to the pros. Yeah, before that, I'm trying to do everything on my own, and now it's kind of like smart guy, you're in yeah. RT, you you take yeah. care of babies, okay? Right, right, <laughs> you have to be smart to take care of babies. And they're right. breathing issues. Come on. Yes. But I need to listen to those that know a hundred <laughs> times more than me. And right. so she said, this is the one house you, you want to buy. And I said, like I said, okay, well, let me drive around and look at four or $500,000 homes. And I did. And I was a fool for doing that. Cause I should have jumped on this day one, hour one. And I drove around, I took my sweet time and I crunched the numbers. I said, those properties aren't going to generate anywhere near as much, much income. This one is brand new, never been lived in. And we're trying to manage this from 2000 miles away. I think I'd have peace of mind getting something brand new, uh, brand new appliances, brand new furniture, brand new everything. And it was amazing when we walked in there. And this house actually was on the market for 42 days. Like nobody was jumping in on it and completely different now. Right. And so I called my realtor three days later. I said, let's make a full price offer. It was uh, and we offered six hundred twenty five thousand dollars and closing costs the builder was going to pay closing costs and he did that that's awesome so no issues with appraisals or anything like that it appraised. Nope. Okay. it appraised yeah it's a four bedroom three bath in this amazing community there's this community it's in it has uh, it's called bear cove falls there's 61 cabins there every single cabin is an airbnb and that's what it's like in in the smokies they'll have all of these small little communities where they're all airbnbs so that, came, that kind of gave us just peace of mind that there's not going to be this neighbor that's calling, you know, the cops on yeah. us or something like that, you know? Right. So, but that's yeah, four awesome. bedroom, four, three bath. Yep. Yeah. So you're not worried about the regulations. Uh, it's an established short-term rental market. And that yes. is huge. That is absolutely huge. And, and what I want to highlight a little bit is when you say, let's listen to the pros. So guys, be very, very mindful. And I know we have some real estate agents in this group and we want to really identify those real estate agents who are not only investor friendly, that's the first step. We want that agent that's investor friendly, but we want that agent that's also short-term rental, a short-term rental expert yes. within very their market. So. Within yes, their make market. sure they have, and it, it's a plus if they have some in the market. Because yeah. now even me with owning two short-term rentals in the market, I know it. I know mm -hmm. what I could get per night. I know, you know, the regulations. I know the taxes and all of that. So having that kind, that's one of the main reasons why I chose my realtor. She was like, we do a lot of handholding. And I'm like, good, because I need some handholding right now, <laughs> you know. Mm -hmm. But without her, I wouldn't have been able to take this step forward so yeah yeah and i think this is a teaching moment and i want to emphasize that some of the questions that i asked to my, my realtors and when i first started i thought to myself i want to buy a short-term run so what's you know my first step oh find a realtor and wrong because not all realtors are created equal when it comes to short-term rental investing. So the realtor I'm looking for is the one that's an expert in short-term rentals. It's That's an expert in that particular market. I would like a realtor that owns short-term rentals 
Okay, I want a realtor that has sold multitudes of short term rentals to investors. And the next question I ask is how many are those investors are going to repeat purchase? So if the realtor sold to an investor, did the investor come back and buy another property from them again? Mm -hmm. right. What's the percentage yeah. of that? That's right. huge for me. Okay. Yeah. I want to yes. know if there's someone on their team that attends HOA meetings. I'm very specific because I like to break into wow. new markets. Yeah, wow. when I break into new markets, those are the questions I ask. Does someone on your team attend HOA meetings? I'm not an HOA person except for if it is in a vacation rental market that we are splitting, you know, the cost of the amenities, the boat slip, the pool, the gym, the clubhouse. Those HOAs I'm okay with, but not in suburban areas. But if it's in a vacation rental location, those HOAs make sense to me mm -hmm. um, for short term right. rental investing. So right. I want to know is someone attending the HOA meetings on my behalf? You know, uh -huh. because right. if there's something changes, I want them to know, oh, you know what, in three years, this is going to happen. This is going to impact you. So I'm very right. specific. I'm not from the Rocky Mountains, but we want to invest in the Rockies and Vail, all of that. When I go there, my Tennessee realtor is amazing. My Florida realtor is amazing, but I'm not expecting them to be my Rocky Mountain realtor. Right, Understand right. that. Right, and even right. right now, we're probably three years out from, or maybe two years out from investing in the Rockies. I'm making those contacts now because mm -hmm. when I'm ready to pull the trigger, I need them to pay attention to me and yeah. say, hey, I know you were looking, here's, you know, I know what you like. I know what you're looking for. Here's here are the things that are available. Yeah. So I want everyone who's listening right now, please, please, please understand that your cousin, my, my brother, I have a brother, a relative who is a realtor. We uh -huh. ended up firing him. I fired him. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this is not like your cousin who's a realtor from Odyssey. No, this right. type of investing has to be highly targeted. You need a sniper. You need a gun. You need a team that is so entrenched in that location that they are going to steer you in the right way because right. a bad deal could be a really, really bad deal. I was with a client two weeks ago. They were about to close. They were two days from closing on a property that was in a banned short-term rental location in the Poconos of Pennsylvania. Oh no. From India originally, the mom, she was crying. She was like, thank you so much. They took their entire family life savings, their children's That's college right. savings that they to yeah. buy this property as a short-term rental. I'm like, no, it's banned. Right, and I'm right. not a realtor. I'm uh -huh. talking about realtors. I'm not a realtor. Yeah. I am not a realtor. Uh -huh. All this to say that <laughs> your realtor can really make or break your deal when it comes right. to short-term rentals. So not to scare yep. anyone, but be be scared if you're using right. the wrong, wrong type of realtor. So I'm just going to yeah, put it in there. Yeah. And really how it worked out was the way I found her is I went on a forum and I, I asked some rookie question that every rookie asked, like, hey, what markets should we invest <laughs> into short term rentals? You know, I love overwhelming. It. Like, I think I had like a dozen responses. And people would have like a list of three, four, five different markets. And every single one kept saying the Smoky Mountains. Yeah. And then I said, okay, that's the number one market. And then I started doing more research. And then I put out a question, who's the best realtor in the market? Overwhelmingly, everyone kept coming back and kept saying this person. And I said, that's my realtor. That's the one I need to go to. I'm going to listen to the pros. I'm, I'm going to listen to the people that are investing in the area. So... Compared to, I see people trying to do stuff on the cheap. You're not going to be successful to do stuff on the cheap. You're not going to, you know, I, I, there was a form that I kind of went back and forth on with, with someone and they said, Hey, I, what I do is I just try to find the place on Zillow and I contact the, um, the listing agent there, which is fine and dandy, but really with me, I want to build a relationship with an amazing realtor and I want them to make tons of money off me. And then mm -hmm. I want them to funnel me deals and I want to keep going back to that person over and over and over again. And Absolutely. I want her to look out for me and I'm going to look out for her. So she's done me right by giving me these four cabins and I send her people left and right all day long. So that's how it works out. That is awesome. And would she happen to be the broker at the short-term shop? Yes, she is. <laughs> that's my girl. 
That is my sister, okay, okay. Avery. <laughs> my yeah. sister from another mother. She is fantastic. And she has got it, an yeah. amazing, amazing, amazing brokerage. And yeah. so she, we actually featured her. Um, if you scroll down in the group, we I had a one-on-one -on -one with her a little while okay. back. And you'll find that YouTube video. Okay. And Christian, she's going to post that for us very, yeah. very soon. So you'll find a YouTube video where uh, we're talking about, you know, realtors and, and all of that stuff and uh, her whole story and what an inspiration she is, right. and her family is. So right. absolutely, I couldn't agree more. I could not agree more. Yeah, yeah. So awesome, awesome, awesome. So let's take a look at the numbers real quick. What about that, guys? I've got a nice little slide for you. Oh, it didn't come out the way I wanted it to, but nevertheless. So this is July 2021. And if this is blurry to you all, which I'm sure it does, what we're seeing here is the net payout of a little under $50,000. Mind blowing, right? For July. It doesn't make sense. Oh my God. This is for your <laughs> happens that we just saw a few minutes ago, right? Right. Yes, that's it. Right? Yeah. Just, just, it doesn't make sense. It, it really, it really doesn't. It's, it's absolutely incredible. Right. And so, yes, how do you, how, how do we explain this, you know, and I try to explain it and every time I try to explain to others what it is to invest in this space and the cash flow and the revenue and the gross revenue. I'm a girl from Haiti, the, the poorest country in the Western Hemisphere. This is someone's annual salary at a really good job. How do we explain this? That this is, you can generate a six figure month. What are your thoughts, yeah. Alex? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, this is, uh, we, we laugh yeah. at it because, yeah, I mean, this is, uh, we, we laugh at it because, yeah, so 49,629 cents, this is what we generated in one month. We were pretty much occupied the entire month um, and our average prices we're, were about $900 a night ADR. That's your we average daily rate. The entire month. And that's um, with and a lot of uh, rookie mistakes or, or new listings because new listings you tend to put discounts or a lower price because um, it's people have construction in the area. Um, but, but this is um, the busiest month of the year. Um, this is kind of an anomaly. Um, uh, June next year, we should um, do a little bit better. But this is the busiest um, and month of the year. Um, November, December, we'll probably do anomaly. close to the same numbers. Um, but June next year, we should do a little bit better. Um, and November, December, we'll probably do close to the same numbers. Awesome. Because the great thing about the um, Smokies is that it really has multiple peak seasons and it can be almost a year round space. I know there's going to be a little bit of seasonality, but what would you say um, your peak seasons are? And, and where are you finding that there's going to be increased seasonality where you're expecting occupancy to be down? Yeah, COVID might change a lot of that. We don't know because a lot of people are, you know, vacationing just in the off seasons and stuff. Yeah, COVID might change. But I would say that. July is the absolute are, peak. Uh, I would say June you know, is the second busiest month. Just uh, May and October stuff. are pretty but close. I would say July um, and I didn't know about October until last peak. year. I would say we had June kind of lower prices. Month. We just started uh, hitting our stride. May and October, October last year, we were 100% booked. And that's and because of the fall October colors. Last year, Everyone we had uh, was flocking the Smokies because of those, um, you know, the October leaves last changing year, colors. And, and then November and December are the holiday season where you you pretty uh, much kill the smokies because of those. Uh, uh, yeah. And then the so spring the break is pretty busy too. Yeah. Uh, and then the summer are the holiday season where you pretty much kill it. And then spring break is pretty busy too. Uh, April, May. That's awesome. Are you hearing me any better, Alex? I know that we were a little bit delayed. Are we caught up, you think? No, I have a little bit of delay. I have probably a three second delay where I'm hearing myself. So that's why I'm kind of slowing down. Okay. So let me try to ask some questions 
from the audience, Alex, so that we can leverage that and take advantage. So I'm going to give it a try and ask questions. Uh, the first question, Alex, if you can hear me, is can you share this tax strategist you named? Okay, so I will respond to that. Um, it is Amanda Hahn. Yes, it yes. is. It is. Okay, awesome. So we're we're back. We're we're back. So let me. I'm going to add that to. All right, it's the tax strategist. Second question from Rafa. Hey, Rafa and Carolyn, thank you for your question. Hey, Rafa, is do you up charge in VRBO in comparison to Airbnb? If so, what percentage do you use? Uh, Three percent. I automatically charge them 3%. And that just has to do with just some of their fees. I pay the $499. And that and just has to do fee. with um, some and of really their fees. I'm going to keep pushing it until they like kind of slow down booking. Fees. Like summertime um, and was really all VRBO. Gonna keep and whenever I'm booked so like that, I tend to think, slow down booking. did I charge enough? Like, like maybe I could have pushed it a little bit was more. all VRBO. And whenever I'm booked like that, I tend to think that I charge enough, like maybe I could have pushed it a little bit more. So awesome. Awesome. Yeah, we do. We do an upcharge as well. Okay. I found my mic. Woo! Okay. Jenna. Thank you, Jenna. Alex, how did you find and vet your real estate agents? I think we covered that a little bit earlier, Jenna. He went on a forum similar to, if not exactly, bigger pockets, <laughs> and yes, asked yes. around the best realtor in that area. So Alex, is that, did you want to add to that? Or did you, do you think you responded to that? No, that's really what it was. I went on bigger pockets and asked like an extremely rookie question. And I just said, hey guys, um, who's the best agent in this market? And actually, they're pretty active on bigger pockets. And I got a message from Luke and Avery at the same exact time because they must have keywords where they were responding like crazy at the time. Uh, so credit to them, they put in the hard work to help grow their business. Um, because I don't know if I'd be answering. I mean, you get so many inquiries on short-term rentals and bigger pockets, so they would be answering questions all day long if they, you know, if they kept answering questions, you know, just with the the keywords. But yeah, that's how I found her. Just on bigger pockets. Awesome. Awesome. So Avery Carl, she's a part of this group, guys. So be sure to check out the short term shop and be patient with her team because they are super busy. They are super swamp. And you're going to find this too. The best realtors are the ones that unfortunately are not always the most available. <laughs> it means they are out there pounding the pavement and doing deals. Be patient, but continue to reach out to them for sure. Okay, That's next question is about how much do you charge per night? Oh, uh, good question. Um, so average in 2020 wound up being about $463. And that's, like I said, we did a lot of rookie mistakes. I think we all do it when we first get there. Like people ask for, you know, triple A discounts and all of these bogus things. And at first I was like, there's no way, and I, I'm really cheap. There's no way people would be paying like $299 a night. And then they were. And then I said, okay, let me increase it to 329. And then they were, and I just kept increasing it and increasing it. But now a year later, I understand the value of my product. My product's actually pretty strong because most of my guests are two to three families and they share the cost. So a $900 a night booking during the summer isn't unreasonable uh, because they're probably gonna pay that at the local hotel that's ran down. And not only that, they're going to be in separate rooms and good luck to finding it. But I provide a better experience because, you know, the whole family can be together. I have like, you know, my cabins are brand new. It has a hot tub. One of them has a pool. Um, they have king beds and they have like this amazing space. So uh, right now, I think we're like 550 um, on average for a rolling 12 months with the first short term rental. And we're about, I think. 72% occupancy. And that winds up being about $135,000 of gross revenue within the first uh, uh, 12 months. So. Okay. So that's incredible, Alex. So our last 
question was in regards to the math. So 900 per night times 31 is about 27,900. Debbie was asking for clarification. And so Debbie, that's about 27,900 for the month for one property. Uh, so our talk tonight was a small number of doors and Alex has two doors of doors that generate huge, huge profits. So with two doors um, in this space, in this luxury vacation rental space, can really give the potential to retire. Alex has already mentioned his wife either cutting back or being able to walk away from W-2. And he's next on the chopping block deliberately, which is excellent, excellent, excellent. And so we're kind of at the top of the hour, Alex. Were there any closing words that you would like to uh, share before we let you go and get away from all this tech issue, <laughs> all this tech? <laughs> yeah, uh, reach out to me on Facebook or Instagram. I'm on Instagram, the real Alex Sabio. The one thing that I do is um, I love talking real estate. So if you guys ever want to hit me up, more than welcome to talk to you. I'm about giving back because I honestly feel like I'm going to get my numbers. It's just a matter of time, but I want to uh, help others along the way. Um, and so I created a Facebook group. It's called um, Healthcare Professionals Real Estate Investors. And so I'm trying to help people that were in my situation, uh, any healthcare workers, doc we have a lot of doctors, nurses, there's some pharmacists there. Um, and I think if we can help them create generational wealth or financial freedom, I think I really worry about the burnout rate with them. Uh, we've worked so hard during COVID and I want them to get to a point where they're not having to worry about the finances and just do what they love, just do the patient care or whatever it is in healthcare. And so we're creating that group. I never ask for a dollar. All I ask is whenever you start getting those checks from short-term rentals, just give me a shout out because I love hearing about it. And then the other thing I ask is that I ask that you help someone else along with you um, that you know. Um, and so, yeah, that's the community. Come join us if you're a healthcare professional. Um, or uh, message me and I'll give you the link. Awesome. And we'll add the link in our um, session for tonight. Uh, unfortunately, I just realized it didn't hit record. I'm crossing my fingers that it still lives. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. All right. It's so, all good. <laughs> it is all good. But I do it all live. the time. <laughs> right. It'll live in Facebook for a number of days, I hope. Christian. Sure. <laughs> but oh my gosh, Alex, it's such a pleasure to have you. You dropped so many gems. You were transparent with us. You gave us all, you spilled all of the tea, my friend. Thank you, thank you, thank you for sharing. I love what you're doing. I cannot wait to see what the new construction projects are looking like. Kudos to you, kudos to your family, kudos to being an advocate for our busy, busy healthcare professionals. And my dog just walked in. But I thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> I thank you. And I look forward to uh, connecting. So everyone who's here, stay tuned. We have more speakers headed your way. Next week, we're going to focus on transitioning from long-term rentals to short-term rentals. 18 properties, y'all. Let's Join in and please, please be sure to sign up for the masterclass that is coming up soon. I have a waiting list. We're going to dive deep into what it looks like to get into short-term rentals. We'll get into the nitty gritty. So be sure to join that. I look forward to it. Bye now, Alex. Thank you. Thank you. And right, everyone thank you. have a great evening. Let's do some music. <laughs> All right.